five. Yeah, it's five sixteen. This is fun. Hi, CBC family. I'm going to give just a few seconds for people to tune in. There we go. We have some people not tuning in now. I don't know about you, but I have really enjoyed these times together, and I am trusting that uh, my voice is carrying okay. I'm waiting for people to join in. Yeah. Excellent. How do you know if sound is okay? Okay. <laughs> Hi, CBC family. I really miss seeing you all. I love you all so much. And I am so thankful that we have these 516 times together so that we can uh, just connect in this way. But I really look forward to the coming days when we will be able to worship, sing uh, together as a group. Um, what a great day that will be. I look forward to hearing how you're uh, getting along in these challenging times and what God has taught you. This week, we're using our 516 devotional time to review the fruit of the Spirit or the work of the Holy Spirit as found in Galatians 5. Yesterday, Zach covered love. Today, we're going to talk about joy. Let's read together Galatians 5, 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. I think it's helpful for us to review some definitions. In Merriam-Webster, joy can be either a noun or a verb. As a verb, which is how it's used in Galatians, uh, joy is an experience, a pleasurable experience, or a delight. Rejoice. Happy is an adjective or a noun. Uh, it's not a verb. So happiness is a pleasurable or satisfying experience. Bluntly speaking, happiness is all about what made me happy. It's about me. While joy is focused on others. I'm happy when I get what I want, at least momentarily. What brings me joy is to see others blessed. Happy and joy are both used in the Bible. Happy, for example, is used in Genesis 30. Leah and Rachel are competing to see who can provide Jacob with the most sons. Leah has a son, and she says, Happy am I, for women have called me happy. I will name my son Asher, which sounds like the Hebrew word for happy. In this, in this verse, Leah is momentarily content in her circumstances, having a son. She is happy. Her happiness lasts almost three verses. Notice the cause for joy uh, in contrast in Psalm 67, verses 3 and 4, where we read, Let the peoples praise you, O Lord. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. The character of God is cause for joy, not self-focused, not dependent on my circumstances. The difference between happy and joy is even more clear when we consider the opposites. The opposite of happy, unhappy. I didn't get what I want. Something bad happened to me. The opposite of joy is sorrow. Take a look at Isaiah 53, 1 to 5. This is a familiar passage describing our, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We read, Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of God been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and no one from whom men 
and was one from whom men hid their faces. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, and he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. <sighs> Familiar passage about the man of sorrows, Jesus Christ. Jesus, knowing that he would face the cross and ascended and ascend into heaven, comforted his disciples in John 16 by promising the Holy Spirit. In John 16, 20 to 22, Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the joy, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When the woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one can take your joy from you. Wow. Hebrews 12, 2 tells us, that Jesus endured the cross because of the joy that was set before him. At the cross, Jesus not only took our sin, he also took our sorrows. Knowing our Savior rose from the grave is joy that no one can take away from you. And Jesus tells us in Luke 15 that there is joy in heaven for every person who turns from sin to Christ. Your salvation, your life in Christ is cause for joy in heaven. <laughs> I want to tell you a story that happened just this past week. Uh, my wife and I, Joy, have a young daughter, Elizabeth. She is a nurse in Baltimore. Elizabeth bought a house less than a year ago and being single lives in the house alone. Last week, her washing machine broke. So she went online and found one at Lowe's that she liked and arranged for delivery on Saturday. This is a Saturday, right the day before Easter. The delivery guys arrived, went down in the basement, looked and saw that the shutoff valve for the hot water was so corroded that they couldn't turn it off and that they would have delivery that day. She would have to call a plumber. So Elizabeth called a plumber and arranged for the plumber to come out and then went on with her day. And then in the evening, she got up uh, and opened up the freezer and saw that some bread dough that she had frozen in the freezer had risen. Her refrigerator freezer had died. So now not only does she not have a washer, she just doesn't have a refrigerator at this point. So she called us very distressed so much happening all at once she had just filled her refrigerator she works full time she has to wear fresh scrubs every day we talked to her prayed with her and acknowledged that it really was a bad day and assured her that she would get through it you know she called back a little while later she'd found a refrigerator that she liked at lowe's and she could have it delivered as well at this i cried she had not gone into a tailspin of depression. She did not crawl into a shell and try to escape. She worked through each problem as it came up. I'm so proud. She's grown so much in the past two years, and God has done a marvelous work in her life. I'm going to have Joy uh, read an email that we received from Elizabeth yesterday. So with permission from Elizabeth, I'd like to read just a few pieces of an email that came and the subject line was little blessings. Good morning, mommy. Thinking about all the little blessings of God over the past few days, even the past few hours. I found out from one of my coworkers that some Lowe's locations are not delivering appliances into households because of COVID but I'm thankful that even though they couldn't deliver Saturdays, my Lowe's assures me they will deliver all the way once everything is worked out. 
The plumber is set to come Tuesday afternoon. I let the scheduler know the job would likely require two people to unstack the dryer, and she made note of it. I'm hoping they will fix everything that day and I can schedule my washer delivery. I'm so thankful I didn't have a crazy, emotional, panicky, depression meltdown. I'm so thankful I got to spend Easter at Aunt Ruthie's. I'm so thankful I get to work from home and don't have to be in the office this whole week so I can get all this stuff taken care of. I'm so thankful I salvaged my Brussels sprouts for Easter dinner and that I have a better perspective on what really matters. I'm thankful for you and dad for treating me like an adult, but caring and loving me for your guidance, your commiseration and validation, and for constantly pointing me back to God. Love you. Was Elizabeth happy? No. She would rather her old washer and dry and uh, refrigerator keep on working. But as you can see, she has joy. Joy in God's timing. Joy that God is making, causing her to mature. You know, it's a key part of this lesson. Let's not pursue happiness at the expense of walking in the spirit and abiding in Christ. Walking in the spirit and abiding in Christ are really the source of our joy. It's not something we have to do on our own. God does it. The Holy Spirit does it. Thank you for tuning in. Let's close with prayer. And again, I look forward to seeing you all in person soon. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit that was promised by Jesus and delivered to us. We thank you that his ministry is to bear fruit in our lives, among them love and now joy. And we'll continue to look at the others in the coming days. Father, I pray that we would abide in Christ, that we would have ours, our greatest desire to seek you and to walk in the Holy Spirit. We want to be useful and used during this challenging time. Please sustain us through this time, keep us safe, and bring us again, but together again soon. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Goodbye. Have a great evening.